Hey everyone, it's Nate. Today I'm gonna show you how to build a budget for 2020. Let's get it. Welcome back everyone. My name is Nate. I'm an accountant with four degrees, 10 years of combined experience in tax and accounting, and I'm here to help you master your money. So for those of you who are new to the channel, you haven't seen me before, you're just curious about what I'm doing here, well, let me tell you. I take joy in being able to help people make wise financial decisions, and I give you the tools to help get yourself there. In this video, I'm going to address one of the most important things that you can learn in your adult life and apply to your personal finances. This is something so very integral and important that it cannot be done without smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm and also subscribing to the channel. Please and thank you. But in all seriousness, I'm talking today about budgeting and how to build a budget effectively for 2020. Budgeting and saving money is really quite simple, but it's not always easy. Today, I'm gonna give you the tools and I'm gonna show you how to make it as easy and painless as possible so that you can maximize every dollar that you bring in and better use the resource that you already have. So I know when everyone hears the word budgeting, we all think of cutting back on the things that we like in our day-to-day -day lives that bring us joy and maybe cost a little extra. But in reality, budgeting is not cutting out Starbucks and Uber Eats and other things we enjoy. What it really is about is understanding what's most important to you and then building a system and using tools to get from where you are now to where you wanna be. But to be able to do this, you'll need to discipline yourself and every day devote yourself to accomplishing the goals that you have set for yourself. But before we get started, I just need to address one thing really, really quickly, and that is a friend of mine needs our help. His name is Kirby Fortenberry, and I'm gonna link his channel in the description. And he is just starting out here on YouTube, and it would mean a whole lot to me if you guys would go and check out his content and maybe subscribe to his channel. Just doing that would mean a whole lot to him and it would mean a lot to me too. Thank you guys. further ado, here we go. So when it comes to budgeting, there are thousands of different methods and schemes out there to try and better use your money. And it gets really complicated really quickly. And I know that for a lot of people, complicated is just simply not doable. So the budget that I recommend and that I try and follow as best as I can is called the 30-50-20 budget. Now this is not to be confused with the 30-50-20 budget. This is a slight alteration of that and I'll let you know why. So simply put, the 30-50-20 budget states that you should take 30% of your total income that you have after tax and put that towards saving and investing. You should take 50% of all your after-tax income and put that towards your essential living expenses. And then with the last 20% of after-tax income, you take that and put that towards your non-essential spending. Following this breakdown is going to enable you to save first, take care of necessities second, and then all the additional stuff, which you don't really need, but it's nice to have, that comes at the end. That comes after you've already taken care of all the things that are really, truly important. So going into more detail, 30% of all of your after-tax income should be put towards saving and investing. And here's what that means. So for all the illustrations I'm gonna have in this video, we're going to assume that exhibit A has a income after tax every month of $1,000. It's gonna keep numbers nice and round and help me be able to not break my brain trying to do some simple math. So like I mentioned a moment ago, this is gonna be our first point in all this, and that is going to be to save and invest the first 30% of all of your after tax income. The reason, reason for this is that I noticed in myself it happens and I'm guilty of this and other people are too, but I've seen that if you put saving to the end of the month after you've already spent all your money on bills and whatnot, that typically there's not a whole lot to save. And so if you make it a priority and you do it first, then you'll make everything else work without the budget you have left over. But saving really should be a priority because when times come, like 
what we're dealing with right now, you're going to be sure glad that you saved that that full 30% and didn't, you know, break that down to like 5% or so. So simply put, always pay yourself first. So there's going to be a little caveat on this first one here, and that is going to be if you don't currently have six months worth of expenses saved up, then you should allocate this entire 30% to your emergency fund. So let's say your expenses for the month, to in total, all of them are $500. This is all your essential expenses. So you take that and multiply it by six, and you'll get $3,000. So what you should do is save up $3,000 in a savings account. And once you have this, then we can get on to this next step. So once you have six months worth of expenses saved up in your emergency fund, this is what you're going to want to do. Going forward, you're going to want to take 25% of the 30%. So back to our original example, say your total amount of income for the month is $1,000. And 30% of that is $300. So taking 25% of that is going to be $75. And the other half is going to be $225. So taking this first 25% or $75, you're going to want to go ahead and put it into a high yield interest savings account. One of the best ones is going to be Ally Bank, and I'll link a description to their website in the description. And with the other 75% of your savings allocation, I would recommend that you open a Roth IRA and then put the remainder of your savings balance in there. So that would be in this illustration, $225 per month. So once you have that money in there, I would recommend that you buy into a S&P 500 index fund. These are very low fee, low management cost securities that you can buy that will sit in your Roth IRA account and grow tax-free. That's the huge advantage of a Roth IRA. The money that you put in there has been after taxes have been already paid on it. So if you put that money in there and you keep depositing more and more and more and you get to retirement, you're gonna have a huge sum of money in there that you can live off of that will be 100% tax free. One of my very first videos that I did, it was called the $76 Millionaire. And simply put, if you invest $76.59 every month for 40 years into a index fund that is grossing you 13.05% annually, you will be able to retire with just over $1 million in the bank. That is a huge, really solid retirement for not a lot of money put in. So if we take this amount and then look at the amount we're putting into our Roth IRA every month of $225, you can see that it's roughly three times the amount that I just mentioned a little while ago that make you a million dollars. So potentially you could have almost $3 million in your retirement account in 40 years if you just do this. So the next category is going to be your essential expenses. This is going to be the biggest chunk of the money that you have to work with really. And so when I say essential expenses, what I mean is things like rent, groceries, medicine, utilities, fuel, all that kind of stuff. Things that you absolutely need to function. So in this category, there's a lot of places where I wanna try and help you decrease your expenses as much as possible. So for most people, housing is going to be your largest expense category. And here are some tips to help decrease that. So if you're currently renting an apartment and you have two bedrooms in there and one's not being used, I would really recommend taking on a roommate. This is great because one, it will lower your total cost for housing, and two, it'll give someone you know, or don't know, depending on the situation, a really decent rate on housing, and it saves you both quite a bit of money. And going a step beyond this, if you have several empty bedrooms in wherever you're staying at, you could rent all of those out and possibly live for 100% free versus paying out several hundred dollars a month or even several thousand dollars a month, depending on where you're at. And going even further than this, if you have a home and you have space outside or you have a driveway or a garage that's just sitting empty, you could do this. You could rent out that space to your neighbors. There's a service that I'm gonna link in the description and basically it allows you to use the space you have laying around in your property to rent it out to your neighbors and, and that's it. And really all they do is just park their RV or boat or whatever it is that they're trying to park somewhere 
on your property and they pay you monthly for it. And that's simple as that. 100% hands off, hands free. You just collect the check. That's it. So those, are, so those are just two quick ways to possibly decrease your housing expense. So up next is groceries. Now this is one that you know people have different opinions on and depending on your dietary restrictions, you may not be able to do some of these things, but here's some of my suggestions. Whatever you do, avoid Whole Foods, guys. It's, it's ridiculously expensive. There's no need for all that. You can get the same quality food at Trader Joe's for a third of what it costs at Whole Foods. So really just avoid that. That's just a quick way to cut down on some grocery expenses. So instead of going to Whole Foods, try places like Ralph's, Trader Joe's, Kroger, Walmart. There's a lot of different options depending on where you are around the country. But going to these places and buying food at the larger supermarkets is typically going to be cheaper than going to specialty boutique and Whole Foods type places. Also consider doing this. When you go shopping for the week, try and consider maybe making a bulk batch of something so that it can last you the whole week. The reason to do this is when you buy things in bulk, typically it's cheaper. Also, if you make a large meal at the beginning of the week and then just eat little bits of that throughout the week, that will save you a significant amount of time versus going and cooking every night almost. The next essential expense I'm gonna give you guys some life hacks for is going to be utilities. One thing to keep in mind with utilities is that for the most part, everything here is going to be negotiable. Here's what that means. If you have an electric, internet, cable, phone bill, typically you can actually negotiate your bill down for a lower payment. So simply you just call them up and say, hey, I'm considering changing my current provider of my electric service or whatever it is. And you say, what can you do to help change my mind about that? And in order to try to keep you as a customer, they'll lower your rates on some things and they may even give you some other incentives to stay a customer with them. Now, I know that some people don't like talking on the phone or anything like this, but this is one time where you're gonna probably wanna do that. My wife and I, we did this last year and we negotiated our electric bill down quite a bit and it saves about $1,000 in 2019 just by one little phone call. So those are just a few quick tips on how to save a little bit of money when it comes to essential spending. So this next section is going to be non-essential spending. And when I say non-essential spending, here's what I mean. Restaurants, coffee, travel, expensive clothes, shoes, you name it. Things that aren't necessary for functioning every day. So one thing that I've noticed is that little purchases that we make every day add up. A few bucks here or there can equal hundreds of dollars over the course of several months. So this little life hack here will hopefully save you a couple bucks. One thing that you'll do that'll instantly save you quite a bit of money is going to be to buy a coffee maker. I know this sounds crazy. I know this sounds too simple, but, but hear me out. If you buy a coffee maker and you buy your own coffee and you make it at home, it's about 15 cents a cup versus upwards of five or six dollars if you go out and get it. Doing this can save you a lot of money if you have coffee every day. Another way to cut back on non-essential spending is going to be cutting back on your travel expenses. So I've already done a full video on how to travel for free and how to do all that, but for those of you who haven't seen it, let me just briefly go over what that means. You can travel for free using credit card points. Simply open up a rewards card, meet the minimum spending requirements responsibly, pay off the card, and then cash in the points for flights, hotels, rental cars, you name it. You can get travel for essentially free. So I know after all this is over, everyone is gonna to want to go and sit down and have a meal in a restaurant inside somewhere. And when you do that, enjoy it, but also consider doing this. Consider going during a happy hour so that your food is reduced by say 50%, or consider getting an appetizer instead of a full-on entree because it's about half the price, but still really quite filling. That'll help save you a couple bucks. Also, really handy, simple trick. Uh, if you're dating or married to someone, here's what you can do. Split a meal with them. It sounds cheesy and cheap, but really places serve you so much food, you don't need a whole plate to yourself. You can split that and save quite a bit of money that way too. So again, these are just a few tricks to help make the most of your money. Things you know you may have thought of, but also things you may not have thought of. So I do these things and they work super well for me and I hope they do work for you too. I really enjoy putting all these things together for you guys and I want to address one thing really, really quickly. In this last week, I crossed over a very important threshold in a YouTuber's life and that is the monetization threshold. 
What that means is, is I got over 4,000 watch hours in the past 12 months, and I got over 1,000 subscribers in total. So what that means is, now YouTube can start paying me. And that's cool and all, but really, I'm here for you guys. I'm here to help get this information out there so that you all can live better lives and save as much money as you possibly can. But none of this would be possible if it wasn't for you. So thank you. If you've watched this far in the video, you are incredible. I really appreciate you guys, and I hope you all have a fantastic week. I will see you next time. Bye.